Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yaroslav. I'm a product manager for Synergy Multiviewer. Uh, and today I'm going to tell you, you'll never guess about Synergy Multiviewer. Um, so uh, while more attendees are joining the webinar, I will, uh, I will tell you what uh, I'm going to be talking about and the way it's organized. So um, the presentation would, will be split into a couple of different parts. Uh, first one would be a short overview of uh, Synergy Multiviewer as a product for those of you who are uh, not familiar with it yet. Uh, second part would be uh, for um, the existing customers or uh, potential customers or system integrators who know what Synergy Multiviewer is, but uh, are curious to figure out what uh, we have to offer in the new generation of the product. So that would be a quick features overview. Um, and uh, at the end of it, I'll have a short demo of all the features uh, that we have well, mostly the new features, um, but I will probably touch some other topics uh, related to the existing features, which you might not be aware of. Uh, and uh, in the final stage of this presentation, uh, I will be happy to answer your questions. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not sure how it's done uh, using the client interface of GoToWebinar, but uh, you should have uh, an option to send your um, messages to the chat uh, or to questions form. Um, and just before I start with the actual slides, uh, I would like someone to please uh, type something in the questions and confirm that uh, you can hear me and you can uh, see my screen. Uh, otherwise, it will would all be in vain. <laughs> Well, I don't see anything in the questions so far, but my previous attempts on the webinar uh, were quite successful and uh, there were no issues with uh, the sound and uh, the screen sharing whatsoever. So I'll be optimistic and hope that everything's fine. I see Mr. Jeremy and Mr. Murad and Peter Sullivan and everyone. Yeah, uh, so I see a bunch of questions have just arrived, uh, at least a bunch of text in uh, questions form have just arrived, so um, it's fine. It's great that you are hearing me, so let's just start. So uh, yeah, for those of you who joined just now, we'll have uh, roughly two parts, talking and demos. Um, and let's begin with talking. Uh, so what is Synergy Multiviewer? It's a complex solution uh, for uh, signals monitoring. So it's something that um, some people, some of you may call a monitor wall or something like that. So that's the software product which um, uh, can decode all your uh, available signals and display them nicely in a mosaic or customized view on uh, your display in the master control room. Um, it's got uh, loads of uh, built-in um, analyzers uh, uh, and alerts. So it would raise the alerts in case any um, issues with your signals are detected automatically and notify the uh, operators about the issues using uh, the built-in uh, notification plugins. Um, it uh, supports uh, all the broadcast standard type of sources. So um, I'm speaking about SDI, uh, NewTek NDI, um, back TS, um, uh, tra transport stream types of signals like RTP, UDP, and SRT, and also our uh, very own, uh, well, nothing special, but uh, uh, shared RAM uh, types of uh, inputs and outputs, which are really good for your internal infrastructure when you're dealing with the other uh, Synergy products. So if you want to share a stream from your Synergy Playout, to your multi-viewer and they are running on the same machine, Shad RAM is a good choice because it provides you with uh, the, 
ability to send that stream without uh, uh, latency because sh uh, the RAM is instant uh, and with minor CPU load. So uh, I mentioned uh, previously that you can customize the layout to be displayed to your operators in uh, any poss possible way. We offer a, um, a des uh, layout designer application, which is an editor where you may create uh, custom layouts, add um, uh, HTML widgets, add the clocks, add the uh, different sources, uh, customize the indicators panel, um, add the watermarks, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a part of Synergy Multiviewer installation package. It's supplied with Multiviewer. So uh, we'll give it a try. We'll show you uh, that product later on during this presentation. Um, so, uh, of course, as you may see on the slide, it's uh, infinitely scalable. So it doesn't matter what kind of uh, TV formats and sources you are dealing with. Multiviewer will be happy to uh, upscale, downscale them and display them in a pristine quality on your screen. Uh, it also has uh, a powerful GPU pipeline, which uh, would enable uh, the GPU of loading for decoding and encoding the streams, uh, the, the signals uh, in compatible codecs like H.264, H.265, using the, uh, utilizing the NVIDIA uh, hardware capabilities. Um, plus uh, the tally from Synergy Capture. So for example, if you started recording and since you capture, you would be uh, the uh, recording status would be indicated on your multi viewer, so that's pretty convenient when you're looking at the previews. Um, uh, and uh, that's pretty much an overview. So let's uh, go a bit further and uh, have a look at the features that we have uh, in the in the new release. So uh, first of all. Um, we have added the 8K support, 8K TV format support on inputs and outputs. So you can both decode the uh, incoming 8K uh, streams using Synergy Multiviewer or uh, output and encode um, the 8K outputs to be displayed on a fancy, nice and shiny um, uh, 8K screen. Um, we added uh, SRT encapsulated uh, IP input and output uh, support, uh, which makes it really easy and uh, nice to for, for the cloud deployments, for the remote work, uh, which is especially topical now. Um, uh, we also took care of adding NDI output um, to multiviewer, uh, ones of you who uh, have some experience with Synergy Multiviewer might know that uh, we have been supporting NDI inputs uh, since version 12, uh, which is like two or three years old. But uh, now with an increasing demand for this technology, we have added it to uh, multiviewer 2 just to make it easier for you to integrate Synergy Multiviewer with the other hardware and software in your system. Uh, we have done a great deal of changes with um, multi-viewer alerts and notifications. Uh, those would include um, adding a couple of new plugins for notifications, uh, adding some integration with Synergy Van Manager, adding uh, some new alerts like color bar and uh, pure audio tone detection. Uh, one of uh, the biggest improvements in uh, Synergy Multiviewer 15 is uh, multi-layout output, because uh, this allows you to output uh, several layouts at the same time uh, on different uh, multi-viewer outputs simultaneously and switch between them when needed. Uh, also, there is a webcam and uh, WDM devices support on inputs and uh, some scaling fun with um, uh, half-height uh, TV formats to uh, split the load between a couple of multi-viewer servers instead of uh, trying to feed all the sources into, um, into one server. We'll get there further uh, on the further slides. So um, 
I don't know how you how familiar are you with uh, uh, what SRT is. Uh, SRT is a secure, uh, reliable transport protocol. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's an open protocol and open library um, created uh, by uh, an alliance of uh, enthusiasts a couple of years ago. It's uh, not proprietary. It's uh, low latency and um, it's not demanding. It's really low maintenance because uh, uh, SRT is really easy to configure. You don't need to build a separate segment uh, for SRT streams, um, unlike, unlike the uh, multicast streams in RTP or UDP, where you needed to have uh, all your streams in a separate segment to make sure that your main operating uh, network is not overloaded. Uh, in this case, in case of SRT, it only operates in caller or listener mode, where the signal transmission um, is uh, established only between the, uh, the the sender and the client, the caller and the listener, on demand. So when there is a demand, the stream is uh, broadcasted. It's quite uh, easy when it comes to cloud de uh, cloud deployments like uh, Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure, uh, because you don't need to deal with uh, network infrastructure, with network uh, configuration in there. Uh, in those cloud deployments, you can uh, move the stream uh, streams around. You can move the uh, you can take care of uh, signals di distribution in practically just a couple of clicks. Uh, so um, it's uh, the, I indicated uh, the way it works and how easy it is on uh, this animation that you see on the uh, slide. Uh, basically, what we're doing here, we're just receiving. Um, the stream that uh, it is broadcasted from our data center in Nuremberg, uh, and uh, we we distribute the streams over the internet for tests for our customers who might want to try them. Um, I remember uh, probably a couple of last uh, trade shows. Uh, we, uh, ones of you who uh, attended our booth on IBC or NAB, um, would see uh, all of us uh, carrying the smartphones and uh, demonstrating uh, these SRT streams on our uh, smartphones. It's uh, just using the uh, mobile internet, mobile connection. So uh, it's pretty lightweight uh, and uh, it's a great solution when you don't want to mess with the proprietary uh, protocols and you don't want to um, invest too much time into building uh, the infrastructure. So um, uh, I would uh, highly recommend uh, visiting uh, SRT website. Uh, it's uh, srtalliance.org. As, far as I remember, uh, and uh, you, you you will get way more details about the protocol there. Uh, also, you would be able to see uh, the list of vendors, um, uh, software and hardware vendors who uh, believed in SRT and joined the alliance and uh, work in joint effort uh, to make it even better. Um, so. Um, with the alarms and uh, notification plugins. Um, yeah, as I was mentioning before, uh, we have added the automatic color bar detection. Uh, so except of all the other uh, alerts uh, that we have, uh, the, uh, the video, uh, video audio uh, RTP signal uh, presence alerts, SDI signal pre presence alerts, and so on. Um, uh, volume control and the others. We have added the uh, color bars detection, which might be as essential um, workflows where um, you need to monitor numerous multiple uh, sources, and some of them might may suddenly go to um, service mode. So in this case, if this uh, alert is enabled, uh, MultiViewer will automatically detect uh, the color bar, uh, depending on the selected standard. If you're in Europe, it's gonna be UB EBU um, color bar. Uh, in the US, uh, it's uh, SIMT. And it would detect it and raise the alerts uh, uh, 
depending on the notification plugin that uh, you have selected. Uh, by the way, I think I uh, failed to mention it at the very beginning of the presentation that uh, should you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them now. I will be reviewing the questions in the end of uh, the conversation, so I won't miss uh, anything. So if you have uh, any questions now or after any um, other slide that I present, uh, just don't hesitate to fire it up and uh, I'll get it answered in the end. Um, yeah, so before I go to multi-layout uh, output, I wanted to tell you about the other um, similar alert, which is um, audio pure tone detection, um, which uh, does pretty much the same, detects when the signal goes to service mode and uh, raises the alerts and triggers some actions, depending on what you uh, have configured in your notification plugins. Um, so uh, multiple layout output. Um, so uh, you will see it a bit later in uh, my presentation, how you can create a couple of different tabs with different layouts uh, for your multi-viewer to be dis displayed simultaneously. If you have a look at this uh, GIF animation uh, on your screen, um, during the configuration, there were three layouts listed and you see um, the, um, the operator switching between them. Uh, so basically what it does, you can assign uh, either a specific layout to your multi-viewer output or all of them if you set the uh, auto option in layout and output. And you may switch between them either using uh, the hotkeys, uh, F1 to F12, uh, which correspond to your layout number, uh, or uh, using the multi-viewer web control, um, which, uh, which is pretty lightweight and simple. In the current generation, it just uh, switches the layouts, selects the required players, plays the video from the source, as well as lets you select the audio channels. Um, but yeah, you will see the web control as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty handy, it comes pretty handy, this feature, to broadcast, uh, to, to transmit the same layouts and different codex resolutions uh, to various receivers as well. So, uh, that's multiple layout. I will show you that in action uh, really soon once we get there. So, um, and for the half-height video um, uh, format, uh, this uh, th this feature um, is pretty handy when you need to split the load between a couple of multi-viewers. So let's say you need to monitor uh, 32 sources and uh, you have various sources. Some of them would have uh, MPG2 um, codec inside, some of them would have uh, H.264. And it would make sense, um, rather than building a super powerful monster machine, it would make sense to utilize uh, the existing machines in your system and let uh, one machine, let's say, take care of uh, the GPU-based codecs, the one with uh, a powerful NVIDIA card. Uh, so the decoding would be done there. Well, the other machine with a powerful CPU may take care of a, a bunch of other um, sources with MPG and CPU would decode that for you. But the greatest thing here is that uh, the main multi-viewer, uh, which I described uh, at the beginning, would, uh, instead of uh, decoding 16 streams, it would just decode one multi-viewer output from the other machine. And um, uh, some of you may say that, uh, well, that was possible in the previous versions of multi-viewer. Uh, that's probably true. Uh, however, uh, with um, when there is a need to monitor the signals uh, in uh, 16 by nine aspect ratios being locked to uh, the quarters, be, being locked to the division of the screen by uh, quarters was not really handy and uh, you would need to fiddle way more with um, um, uh, with the actual layouts to make it look nice on your screen. 
So uh, what we did, we added uh, half high TV formats, which are represented in a separate uh, which are represented in a separate group of uh, TV formats in the list of TV formats for your output. And uh, on slave multiviewer, you may select a half height TV format. Uh, while on the receiving, on the master multiviewer, you would just need to select the you know, option to force aspect ratio. In this case, um, on the screenshot, you see uh, 32 by 9. Uh, and uh, it would be presented in a nice, neat way on your screen. Um, again, that would be demonstrated to you in the end. Um, getting back to uh, notifications. Should have moved that slide uh, before this one, but all right. So uh, what we did with the notifications, probably the uh, the, the the addition, the, the the improvement that I like the most is adding uh, Synergy Event Manager um, as a notification plugin, adding an integration with Synergy Event Manager. So for those of you who don't know what Synergy Event Manager is, it's uh, our utility that helps you to integrate Synergy software be it Synergy Multiviewer or Synergy uh, Playout System or Synergy Capture um, with external hardware or um, software. So as you may see uh, in the left uh, part of the animation, there is a list of plugins, uh, most of which are uh, the, uh, most of which are uh, the SDI routers. Um, which you can integrate with uh, our software in R, for example, that would trigger switching the sources on uh, the SDI router. But with MultiViewer, it's more interesting because, uh, for example, the PowerShell uh, plugin that is uh, demonstrated on this uh, animation uh, gives you a variety of different options on what you can do uh, in case of an alert in MultiViewer. So basically, you can attach a uh, uh, PowerShell script to it, which would then trigger some actions uh, outside of multi-viewer. So uh, it, may, uh, it may be used to uh, integrate with the other software, which uh, gathers your, um, um, your alerts and logs and so on, gathers the data for you. Uh, it may be, um, it, it may feed some telemetry systems, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah, so it may feed some external telemetry systems, which are not Synergy if you're having your own telemetry system, uh, which is not Elasticsearch based, because we have that out of the box. Uh, you can use PowerShell for that. Also, uh, the, uh, the, the integration with Synergy Event Manager allows you to send the HTTP commands. Uh, so uh, you can use different uh, APIs of uh, different devices. Um, and uh, as well as trigger the GPI uh, card contact opening and closure if you want to wire some sort of an external device to it. So uh, we basically just open a huge new horizon for what you can do with multi-viewer uh, notifications. Uh, and uh, that might come pretty handy. Uh, for those of you uh, who are not impressed with the list of plugins that uh, Synergy Multiviewer, uh, that Synergy Van Manager supports. Um, I've got some more good news because uh, uh, Synergy Van Manager plugins are really easy to develop and add uh, into Synergy Van Manager. We have that documented and described. This information is available in Synergy Open. Uh, we also offer um, assistance uh, in developing these uh, plugins so we could either train your developers on how to do that and answer their questions um, uh, or just develop, design it for you and uh, integrate it for you. Uh, this is all delivered uh, via Synergy Professional Services Framework. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way it's done. Um, uh, needless to say that uh, we can design any PowerShell script uh, for you, if there is a need to integrate uh, some external device uh, with Synergy Multiviewer that way, uh, basically it's uh, it all just depends on the task and challenge we need to face and uh, just contact us. We'll be happy to consult you and uh, lead you through the process. 
Um, I don't think uh, NDI output needs any special uh, presentation. Uh, new tax NDI technology is now uh, quite uh, quite famous on uh, broadcast uh, in the broadcast uh, industry. Uh, we just made it easier uh, for you to integrate uh, uh, your Synergy products uh, and multi viewer. Uh, in particular, with um, uh, with NDI devices or uh, the, the software that, that supports NDI, so now you can feed uh, your um, multi viewer layout to NDI at the same time using your classic uh, IP output, windowed output, and uh, the rest of them. So the uh, multi viewer is not just limited to one output. Uh, I think that's just obvious. <laughs> Um, uh, we also added the webcam support. It's not a revolutionary feature, but it may come handy for at least a couple of cases that I could think of. Uh, one of them is that it's just a cheap way uh, and easy way to uh, plug in some physical monitoring of um, the studio or master control or other places on your facility. Uh, for the operators working with multi-viewer. Um, uh, the other one is uh, uh, probably going to be more interesting for our system integrators because uh, it's the easy way to demonstrate multi-viewer to a customer uh, using just a laptop. You don't need to think about uh, getting the proper uh, sources for your multi-viewer when you're demonstrating it. Uh, every laptop has a webcam. Uh, you just open it up, configure this device, uh, and uh, there you go. You've got your signal. So uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, our future plans for the multi-viewer, for a couple of next multi-viewer versions. So uh, one of the big ones, which would require most of effort, but uh, I I believe it will uh, take the product to the whole uh, new level and raise some more interest is uh, an ability to uh, configure, to, to set the alert thresholds and parameters and sensitivity for each source. Currently, in uh, in the current generation of Synergy Multiviewer, you can only do that globally. So uh, you need to balance, for example, if you're monitoring the signals for a couple of different regions or markets or um, uh, yeah, or countries, uh, and the quality requirements are different. Uh, in current generations of Multiviewer, you need to balance between them and uh, come up with the numbers and sensitivity parameters um, that would satisfy all of them. Uh, in the next multi-viewer major release, uh, we're planning it for version 16, uh, you would be able to uh, set them up for each uh, source uh, separately, which makes it easier and more flexible. Um, we are. We have also added the non-48 kilohertz uh, audio support. Uh, in modern world, uh, we are dealing with a bigger variety of sources, and uh, the requirement to monitor them uh, is always there. Uh, and um, while uh, the current generation and all the previous generations of Synergy Multi Viewer um, we're only um, uh, supporting the 48 kilohertz uh, audio. Uh, the next multi-viewer, and I'm speaking about a minor release, uh, so it's going to be still within 15. Uh, it's going to support the non-48 kilohertz audio, so um, you will be able to monitor it there. Uh, another uh, feature that may be really handy for troubleshooting and dealing with the issues is uh, a built-in uh, transport stream analyzer. Um, this, uh, the, the, this feature would help you to analyze the low-level parameters of uh, transport stream. So while multiviewer is now mostly focused on video signal, uh, this feature would allow you to take care of uh, the actual transport stream analysis. Uh, it's uh, quite 
verbose and detailed. Uh, I've seen it in action because, uh, and some of you could have seen it in action too, because uh, uh, we have designed this as uh, a troubleshooting, uh, as a troubleshooting utility, and it's available for free. It's published on uh, Synergy GitHub uh, repository um, with the documentation as well. So it, it's now a console tool, but uh, it's time to actually integrate that powerful tool, that, that jam that has been hanging around in our um, uh, repositories for ages. It's time to integrate it into the actual product and uh, make it available for you. Uh, just using a couple of clicks. It might also uh, be really useful uh, for ones of you who are using uh, telemetry, because um, the transport stream analyzer will be feeding uh, the telemetry por portals, will, 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 will be feeding the um, exact detailed data to Elasticsearch, uh, which can then be uh, represented in uh, nice uh, and comprehensive flowcharts uh, using, let's say, Grafana, as, like we use in uh, our telemetry portal. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, another thing uh, that we are adding to MultiViewer is uh, an integration with Synergy Capture to record the video in case of uh, an alert. What it does uh, it just gives an ability for the operator to review uh, the video at the moment of some sort of a failure or a problem detected um, in the video stream and see what exactly uh, was broadcasted to, um, uh, to, to to the viewers. So uh, we found uh, the easiest way to do it is using Synergy Capture, uh, just because we can rely on it. It's, uh, it's been proven to be a reliable ingest tool. And uh, well, we have that kind of a tool uh, in our toolkit. Uh, why wouldn't we take advantage of that? So it would just uh, use the Capture API to trigger recordings and uh, you would be able to set up uh, the uh, the encoding parameters for your recordings and locations just the way you do it with Synergy Capture. Um, and uh, the, another thing uh, we're adding to MultiViewer uh, 16 is uh, extending and improving the web control. Uh, currently, it's, uh, it's just a simple web control with a couple of buttons, which allows you to um, as I was uh, telling earlier, switch the layouts, uh, select the players, view the source, the, the, the source signal there, play the audio on different channels. Uh, we plan to extend the abilities of that uh, web control to make it even more flexible, to uh, make it available for you and let you uh, do a lot of other things. Uh, these are just a couple of features uh, for the next multi viewers I wanted to talk about. I, I'm, I know for sure that uh, we have uh, uh, we have a, uh, some other things in our list, but uh, well, I don't want to disclose all the secrets uh, right now. So you'll see it uh, when we actually release it. Um, and at this point. Uh, I think I'm done with the presentation and uh, uh, let's move on to the actual demo. Uh, so I'll go through uh, SRT input and output configuration. I'll show you uh, multi layout uh, output, I'll show you the half height uh, TV formats decoding. Um, uh, I will demonstrate you how uh, Synergy uh, multi viewer layout designer looks like, uh, where you can, can create your custom layouts. And uh, another thing uh, I will demonstrate to you would be uh, how to uh, enable SDI output on Synergy multi viewer. Uh, uh, yeah, I, you're right, I mentioned um, uh, SDI. Uh, as uh, one of the supported uh, stream types on input earlier, but we never added uh, the SDI output because Synergy has been always uh, propagating 
uh, the idea of uh, uh, IP infrastructure, and we were never big fans of uh, SDI infrastructure. Um, those of you who have seen us on the trade shows uh, should remember our motto, uh, SDI must die. Uh, so we still believe in that, but SDI is not dying any soon. <laughs> so um, we have a way to take care of that. Um, and I'll probably start with uh, demonstrating this, um, this particular point how to make um, SDI output work uh, for Synergy Multiviewer. For that, we would need Synergy Encode. Uh, Synergy Encode is just a Synergy Playout engine uh, without uh, an automation uh, option. So basically, it has all the best bells and uh, whistles that uh, Synergy Playout has, but um, uh, excluding automation. And uh, obviously, it's re reflected on its price. It's pretty affordable, and uh, it's way more powerful than just enabling the SDI output for Synergy Multiviewer. Uh, so uh, the configuration of that mode is pretty simple. Um, you just uh, open your uh, playout configuration, and oh, that's the wrong one. And uh, the only thing you need to do to enable uh, to, to switch uh, your playout engine into Synergy Encode mode is uh, just tick off this checkbox on start, immediately switch to live. In this case, it wouldn't need um, any, it wouldn't look for any uh, uh, pro client connection uh, as a source of the playlist data. It will just play the, um, uh, the signal from the input. So, you uh, tick off this checkbox, then you switch to playback tab, select the TV format of your channel, uh, select the input, which would, you would like to receive from your multi-viewer, and on output, you select uh, the required SDI board. Uh, in, my screen, uh, in my case, it's just the screen output because I'm using a simple laptop for this demonstration, and uh, obviously it doesn't have an SDI board, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's quite easy to change it. Um, also, I mentioned uh, Synergy shared RAM um, inputs and outputs uh, earlier in this presentation. And in this case, it comes particularly handy because um, if you don't have a spare machine or you don't want to uh, move the signals around your network uh, and send it over IP, it would make sense to install uh, Synergy Code Engine on the same server where your multi-viewer is, and then just uh, distribute the um, uh, Synergy Multiviewer output to Encode Engine using RAM. Uh, as I said, uh, it's got uh, insignificant CPU uh, load and zero latency because it's instant. So uh, that's the way. Uh, I'm using it uh, here on this machine, and uh, as I was saying, it's pretty easy. So I'm starting my uh, encode engine. You see my dark screen input, and now I'm starting my multi viewer. I'm running it as an administrator because um, I selected global namespace for my shared uh, RAM uh, input. Uh, for my shared RAM output uh, and input, and that only works properly in uh, as an administrator due to um, uh, the operating system uh, requirements. So, uh, as you may see uh, on the playout dashboard here, uh, the multi-viewer layout is already there. And uh, if I open my windowed output, here you go. So uh, that can be on your SDI. Easy, isn't it? Um, yep, so that's, uh, that's my encode. Um, let me just check. Oh, I lo lost my mouse pointer. There it is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will now stop the encode engine because uh, the laptop is not really happy with that load. 
Uh, currently, it's got uh, it, it's on ninety nine percent, and I hope it's uh, not reflected on uh, the quality of the broadcast, and it, I'm not interrupting or, or anything. So, um, yeah. So let's go to multiple layout output. Uh, as you may see, I have a couple of uh, the outputs uh, configured in my Synergy Multiviewer. So the one that you see in front of you is uh, uh, the windowed output. Uh, you may make it, uh, uh, you, you may set it up uh, to be as uh, big as you wish. In my case, it's just full HD because uh, it makes sense. I don't want it to obstruct my whole screen. Um, and for the layouts, uh, for, for this particular layout, I selected the auto option because all the others would lock this output on a particular layout. Uh, I think at this moment it would make sense to, uh, to make a pause and uh, explain the uh, concept of uh, the lay layouts to you. So what you see in front of you on the screen now is um, uh, Synergy Multiviewer Layout Designer. It's a simple editor where you can create the custom layouts. So by default, without using this, you can also configure your multiviewer to receive the streams and you can configure uh, pretty much everything, all the sources and indication and uh, backgrounds and so on. Uh, but it would be just a simple mosaic where you configure the number of rows and columns and populate them with the uh, you know, source players. While in uh, Layout Designer, you could do something like this. So I'm using one XML file, which is uh, my layout, but it has uh, five different tabs uh, with different sources and different um, layouts, again. Uh, so uh, I, uh, the, basically, Multiviewer operates, with, uh, operates the major uh, layout. Yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, you can add uh, all sorts of things here and customize it the way you want it. So uh, there are the clocks, uh, there are the uh, HTML widgets. Uh, this one displays uh, the contents of uh, our official website. Uh, yeah, that's how boring I am. Uh, and uh, yeah, this one uh, is just an image and you, you, can, you can fiddle with it any way you want. Uh, also, uh, you can set your um, layout up in any way uh, that you wish, but I was going to show you the multiple layouts. So what it does, uh, in, my, in my case, with my windowed output, I currently tr uh, transmit five layouts. And if I hit F1, F2, uh, F3, uh, buttons, you will see um, the, those different tabs displayed uh, and switched uh, by pressing those keys. Uh, this can be also done with uh, the Synergy Multiviewer Web Control. Uh, I told you it's minimalistic and simple, uh, but what it does, uh, it does what it does. Uh, you need to switch your outputs. Here you go. And yeah, you just click these buttons. Obviously, it's got the uh, API is described, and uh, uh, you can do any sort of uh, custom scenarios with that. Uh, you can select particular players. Uh, you can enable uh, some uh, audio channels. In my case, it's always one, so yeah, I didn't bother to add the sources with more audio channels. Uh, but yeah, that's th that's what it does. Uh, and um, yeah, so as I said, uh, that's the multiple outputs. And uh, in my case, it's just windowed output. But if I enable, uh, let's say, the SRT uh, output in, uh, in a parallel, like simultaneously for the same multiviewer server, uh, and uh, select auto option here, uh, I would probably demonstrate it to you on uh, my NDI output because uh makes more sense i have it uh linked to my syngen code engine so um hmm 
Did I actually apply the settings? Yeah. So now you see two windowed outputs. Uh, they are both configured for auto. And if I need to switch my uh, layouts, um, the switching will happen across all the outputs which have uh, the auto option specified. If uh, let's say I want my NDI output to only broadcast uh, layout number three, I lock it to layout number three. And no matter what kind of switching I do on my um, using my web control hotkeys, uh, where's my web control? Um, those changes are not reflected on my um, uh, NDI output in this case. Uh, so yeah, this is my multiviewer. This is my uh, NDI output to uh, encode engine, and um, this is what it does. Uh, yeah, so for now, I'll stop it. Uh, what else was there? SRT. Uh, yeah, so with SRT, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to demonstrate you. I, I think most of the streams I'm dealing with here, if not all, are uh, SRT, just because it was uh, really easy and handy to configure it uh, uh on my side uh, at the office uh but uh what i wanted to show you is that uh at least the first layout all um all these streams here on this screen uh they are uh, broadcasted from nuremberg they are not local. On the other layouts, I used uh, some air engines, uh, some other multi viewers to demonstrate to you the half height. But uh, as you may see, it's the, the, those streams are received uh, over the internet, except of that one marked as vintage TV. It was supposed to be the local uh, air engine, but it's not. Um, but yeah, it's basically what it does. So SRT is uh, extremely easy to configure. It's just that there are just a couple of things to watch out for. Uh, so in order to go to, uh, to to get to SRT configuration, you need to switch your output no, or input to uh, unicast mode uh, and uh, select SRT from uh, this drop down menu. And uh, once you want to configure it in a listener mode, uh you just specify the zeros here uh as an ip address uh so you don't mention your ip address you just mention the board over which you're going to broadcast it so uh in that case this output will be uh waiting for the request from the caller application and uh, which would uh, um which would be sent to the ip address of this machine and port and in this case, uh, your stream will be uh, played and will be broadcasted to that machine. There is also another way to um, uh, set it up. It's uh, by, uh, by making it and uh, by setting it up in the color mode where you specify the actual IP address and uh, the port. In that case, uh, you are sending the uh, inquiry uh, to a listener uh, to initiate the streaming, uh, as easy as that. Uh, if uh, any of the information that I told you seems to be confusing to you, I would highly recommend you to uh, visit Synergy Multiviewer page on Synergy Open, uh, where I have uh, this whole 45 minutes long presentation uh in a condensed form uh with the same nice gifts uh in uh what's new in synergy multi viewer post uh so uh you're welcome to go there and review the information from there um and just check it out for yourself um let me check my slides and see what else i was going to show you um have high tv formats uh, probably the easiest way to demonstrate uh, the way it works would be just showing you the layout first. Uh, I guess it's on number four. Uh, so as you may see, uh, my layout number four, these all are different sources. These all are different players on top, the top part of it, I mean. 
uh, don't see you, don't know if you see the highlight. But uh, the other one, which is called half height, should be now highlighted. It's just one source from the other multi-viewer machine in this office. So um, what I did here, uh, what I did on that machine, as you have seen in the animation, I configured my output to be uh, half height. So I just selected uh, half height TV format there. Um, that's it on the output and I just enabled it. Uh, and uh, on the receiving side, on this master multi-viewer that I'm showing to you, I just uh, forced the aspect ratio to be 39, uh, 2 by 9. And uh, here is what, what we see. Um, it looks like a proper mosaic on one multi-viewer. Uh, if you see the pixels on the bottom part of it, it's just because the, all the sources there are SD. And uh, yeah, it's not the the perfect source but anyway um instead of uh, decoding 16 streams in this case this multi-viewer decodes only nine uh which makes sense for the load balancing um uh yeah what what else did i want to show you um uh, i don't think i need to stop uh, on uh the on the indication, and I see I'm overrunning. I just realized I'm overrunning the originally allocated time. And I really appreciate the fact that uh, the majority of you are still here with me. Uh, and um, yeah, so I'll just quickly uh, run through <clears throat> the list of um, uh, the, the list of our alerts and notifications. Uh, so uh, we do have these audible alarms and uh, they are not new, they were there for ages. Uh, we have now added the additional uh, player highlighting for the case of alarm. Uh, so we added uh, a frame uh, around the players to indicate uh, the player in your grid which is having troubles. So you may configure the thickness of uh, that frame, uh, the color, and uh, it will be indicated in your grid uh, in uh, quite an explicit way. Uh, so uh, yeah, as you may see, there is a whole list of uh, different alerts in multi-viewer and uh, they can all be enabled at the same time. Uh, you can specify different severity levels for your alerts, depending on uh, what notifications, uh, what kind of alerts you need to be raised for that kind of problems. So we offer you uh, three different groups by default. And by grouping your uh, alerts uh, into these three groups, you can just split them between the notification plugins. So uh, you may send all the major alerts to Windows event logs, as well as uh, to uh, send a separate email notification for that, while some info alerts would only be reflected in Synergy Telemetry or in uh, SNMP uh, traps, the device that you have configured. So that's as easy as it. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, these thresholds are uh, configured globally for, uh, for, for your per server. Uh, in the next versions of Synergy Multiviewer, they will, uh, you, you will have an ability to set them up for each source individually. Um, so uh, I think I didn't mention licensing in this, uh, uh, in this presentation. So I'll just mention that and move on to your questions. Uh, so, um, we offer two kinds of uh, licensing models. One of them is uh, physical hardware dongles for those who like it old school. Uh, so these are USB encrypted dongles and uh, probably um, 
most of you who are who who already have the multi-viewer installations or have any experience with any previous experience with multi-viewer installations we're using those uh however for the last couple of years we also offer uh the software licensing uh this is exactly what you get when you download the synergy multi-viewer trial from our official website you just got a key uh which you would need to apply in your uh, Synergy License Manager is the utility that is installed with uh, practically every uh, Synergy application. It's supplied with it. Uh, I was trying to launch it to demonstrate it to you, but uh, let me check where is it. So it's a simple utility where you uh, just apply your uh, serial number and uh it just works uh it's also brilliant for the cloud deployment uh or uh, virtualization because um, uh, virtualizing the dongles is a bit of a pain uh, so uh that's the licensing that's probably it on the presentation uh and uh, in order to avoid overrunning for even longer uh i'll just switch to the questions uh so uh, let me try and get uh the questions panel separately um here because go to webinar displays them in some sort of a weird manner and weird uh order uh yeah so i see all the messages uh, with hello and the confirmations. Uh, uh, and I finally got to the first question. Mr. Mustafa is asking whether uh, they can use the software in CCTV and digital signage. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly digital signage is, but uh, for CCTV, yeah, indeed, depends on your cameras, depends on your sources, depends on ki uh, the kind of streams that uh, they are transmitting. But uh, uh, if I just skip all these details, the answer is yes. Uh, but details are always important. The devil is in the details. Um, if you expand on uh, that question, I'll be happy to suggest you uh, in a more precise manner. So um, Murat is asking uh, about multi-layout output. Does it mean multi-layout output simultaneously or just one selected output from available layouts? Um, well, that's, uh, that's multiple layout simul simultaneously. So basically, if you uh, don't lock to a specific output, uh, by selecting just the output number uh, on your oh my god uh, on your output uh, settings here. Uh, let's check this one. If you select auto um, uh, on your IP output, let's say uh, it will uh, the, the, all four layouts will be broadcasted. And if you want to switch between them, you just use the web control or uh, hotkeys, as I was saying. But yeah. Those outputs are uh, uh, outputted simultaneously, even though the sources are different. Uh, Bill Sanford. Hello, Bill. Uh, doing late. Will you share a link to this so I can watch it later? Yeah, the recording is available, uh, and I believe our sales and marketing departments will uh, take care of uh, sharing the links to them to you. Um, if they don't, I can just send it to you via email. Um, so, yeah. Ah, Bill has left. He doesn't hear me. But anyway, for those of you who want to review this uh, presentation, uh, we'll be happy to provide uh, the links. I'm pretty sure they would be uh, either emailed to you or shared on our uh, social media. So just stay tuned. Um, Diego Perez. Uh, at this moment, we have MultiViewer 14. Can we switch to 15? Does it have cost? Thanks. Good question. Um, of course, you can switch to MultiViewer 15. Uh, the process is pretty easy. Uh, depending on, your, on the sources that you use, 
because for example if you're using the uh, SDI cards you would also need to upgrade the drivers uh, which is still not a big deal uh, but uh, anyway uh, yeah switching from the previous versions of multi-viewer is welcome and possible um, uh, and uh, for the coast um, the answer is uh, it depends on uh, your SLA agreement if you have a valid SLA contract, service uh, contract, uh, then you just request uh, the license upgrade from Sinji Help Desk, and uh, there you are. If uh, for whatever reason your uh, Sinji uh, license, uh, Sinji SLA has lapsed, or you never purchased one. Uh, I think it would make sense to contact uh, our sales uh, team, and they will uh, they will list you all the possible options. But uh, the process of upgrading from previous versions of MultiViewer to 15.1, which is now the most recent, uh, we have released it last week, um, is really easy. It's really straightforward and seamless. Uh, could you please zoom in? Oh. Uh, I didn't think that 4K resolution could be causing uh, the problems. And I see uh, two different uh, attendees uh, uh, writing about that. Uh, yeah, and I think it's too late to zoom in, unfortunately. Um, I should have taken care of that uh, in the earlier stages. Um, so uh, Mustafa is clarifying and he's. Uh, question digital signage is digital info boards in shopping malls banks schools restaurants uh yeah so in that in that case i think it uh can be used uh in a similar ma manner as well because uh from technical point of view it's no different from cctv as you were uh asking so uh it's just a matter of um, figuring out what uh kind of uh um, distribution formats the cameras are offering and make sure that they are uh, supported by multi-viewer or they are transcoded into a format that is supported by Synergy multi-viewer. So uh, yeah, the answer is still yes. Oh, I see Bill is here. Yeah, for whatever reason, uh, the status in uh, the questions tab uh, was saying that uh, you have left. Anyway, yeah, as I said, I will uh, be happy to send the link to a recording to you. Uh, how much does MultiViewer version 15 cost if they are a new user? This is Mustafa asking. Um, I uh, I can only uh, I can only guess because I don't remember the exact numbers, uh, but just to make it easier, I'll just go to synergy.com where you can buy it just using your PayPal account or credit card uh, online. So we'll see the price uh, just there. So uh, yeah, just in a couple of clicks uh, using our uh, website, uh, I'll try and zoom in. How is it done? Yeah, there we go. So the price, we sell it in eight channel packs. So the price of uh, one eight channel pack is uh, uh, 1,600 pounds. Uh, I think it would make sense to switch it to dollars. It's $1,800. So uh, as I was saying, you can uh, easily purchase it just using uh, the form on our website. Uh, it's as simple as that. For more information, more options, uh, just contact the sales team. Trust me, they would just get back to you instantly. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Peter. Uh, does anyone have any more questions? Come on, I know you have some. <laughs> how to buy SLA and how much it is? Um, for an SLA, I don't have a price list on uh, this machine, so I cannot check. Uh, something around 
20% of the product price, but uh, I don't want to mislead you. So the best practice would be to contact our sales team. Uh, basically, how to buy an SLA, contact our sales team, uh, tell them you want an SLA for uh, Synergy Multiviewer or any other products, they will make it happen. As simple as that. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't want to lie to you about the numbers. Uh, I'm not responsible for the commercial part uh, in this company, so uh, I, I just try not to memorize them. So um, there we go. Any more questions? I know you have some. Don't be shy. Um, in that case, I'll give another chance uh, for anyone who wants uh, to ask some questions and uh, I'll just tell you that uh, uh, um, I really appreciate uh, all of you uh, joining this uh, webinar today. I really appreciate uh, your attention and your time. Uh, apologies for overrunning for 20 minutes now. Uh, I hope it doesn't disrupt your further schedule today. Um, uh, if any of you uh, have any more uh, questions or remarks or ideas, uh, just feel free to send them to us um, and uh, we will be happy to sit down and discuss it with you and find uh, the ways to make uh, uh, whatever you want happen. Uh, and uh, if you need any uh, technical consultancy, of course, uh, we're always there to help. Um, um, uh, yes, there was a question whether, uh, th this question was asked before, but I will answer it again because it came up again. Uh, for those of you who uh, joined uh, later and missed some parts of this uh, presentation, the recordings will be available. They are already available within uh, GoToWebinar uh, system. Uh, all of them, I uh, I just need to figure out how to share them. I think our marketing department and sales will take care of that uh, a bit later, uh, maybe this week. Uh, so yeah, I, I just need to uh, I just need to figure out uh, what's the plan with sharing. But the plan the, the, we had a plan to share the recordings, of course. Um, uh, so yeah, I would would appreciate uh, any feedback from you on what could be uh, what you liked about the webinar, what could be done better, um, uh, and in the next one we'll f we will improve it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll see you all around on the trade shows and uh, on the other webinars uh, once this whole lockdown situation is over. So at this moment, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks again for joining. Thanks again for listening. Uh, uh, good luck to you and stay healthy.